Go ahead. Make my day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Real Estate Realities with the Rebel Broker. My name's Robert Whitelaw, and I am the Rebel Broker, licensed real estate broker in the state of California, member of the National Association of Real Tours. But please, don't hold that against me. Here we are once again, folks, to review all things real estate related. We have kind of an interesting one today. This one's going to focus on folks who uh, might come at this from a couple of different angles, right? Uh, this is uh, some great data from our folks at Wallet Hub, uh, stuff I love to cover. Uh, this time we'll be talking mostly about best and worst cities to flip houses in in 2018. So buckle up for that. And of course, we'll always try to put a little bit of a spin on the perspective, right? Because places that tend to be good for flippers are also good for buyers, right? Because if the idea is in the near term, you're going to be able to buy a property and, and make some modifications to it and sell it for a lot more. Well, that means that you as a buyer over maybe a longer period of time, as you live in the home, you can invest a little equity into it yourself, a little sweat equity, maybe a little cash too, as you're going through changing things get more equity out of the property, right? As you're going, you're, you're just building how much, much that home is worth, which is a good thing, right? Um, so I think these are, this is a good topic. I love covering this kind of stuff. It also is, is an indication of robustness, right? Because what are the things that make a flip a good flip? Uh, a growth in the market, other types of things that are all good things. So it's something that can also draw the attention of other types of investors. And I think it's also good for folks who have a buy and hold strategy to use data like this to maybe guide their views in one direction or another. Why? Why not? Uh, if you get into a situation where you decide, you know what, I really do need to, while I've purchased this home and I've made some updates to it to, to make it a super viable rental, my situation has changed. I need to liquidate it faster than maybe I would have. Maybe you're one of those folks like I am, where when you have an investment property, you do a yearly evaluation. Maybe something comes up, maybe an opportunity comes up with a property elsewhere in the country or another market you want to get into, and you need to be able to sell a property quickly, which would be an indicator of a market like this, since flipping is one of those places where you want to be able to sell those properties relatively quickly, and you want to get that liquidity out without getting a second on it or using it for any kind of other kind of financing for other efforts, and you just want to get that money out. There you go. You've got a you've got a property that's already primed for that kind of a move. So we're going to go ahead and cover this. We'll top, cover, I think, probably the, the top 10 and the bottom 10 on this list. See what other kind of interesting bits of wisdom we can tease out of these facts. And then maybe we'll pick one of these cities to get a, take a closer look at uh, in a future show. So there you go. Now, one thing I also like about the folks at Wallet Hub is they tease out other pieces of data that we'll absolutely cover here because they're super sexy. Um, and they're also very informative and also overlap very interestingly with chats we've had about other other regions, other areas, other metros that get all the love, that get all the, the press, all the headlines, all the ink, digital and physical from the press on how awesome they are, how amazing they are. But not so much when it comes down to actually doing some math on whether or not it makes you money or boosts your equity or or gets your money working as hard for you as you want it to. All right. So what I like to do also in these things is let's cover the 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 methodology first, because I think it's always good to understand when you're looking at data, how do these people crunch this? How do they come up with these hierarchies? Now, in the case of this one, um, Wallet Hub compared 172 cities including the 150 most populated cities, plus at least two of the most populated cities in each state, except for the cases where data limitation existed across key uh, three key dimensions. One, potential market or market potential. Two, renovation and remodeling costs. And three, quality of life. Uh, they evaluated those dimensions using 27 relevant metrics, which are listed below 
And if you go to the, I'll have a link for this in the description of the show. So they'll be listed at the very bottom of the article. Each metric was graded on a 100 point scale with a score of 100 representing the most favorable conditions for house flipping. Uh, lastly, they determined each city's weighted average across all metrics to calculate its overall score and use the resulting scores to rank order the sample. The sample considers only the city proper in each case and excludes cities in the surrounding metro areas. So this is this is a key, right? So when we talk about areas like San Jose, that's a big thing. When we talk about areas like Phoenix, that's a big thing. Because remember, these are all cities that are at the center of tons of other cities that often end up in these kinds of stats. Okay. And for context, home flipping is a real estate term for buying a property with the purpose of reselling it for profit, which is generated through appreciation of the home's value or repairs and renovations. And I think an additional layer we'd want to put on that is in a relatively short term, right? Normally a flipper crosses over into being a buy and hold if they're holding that thing for longer than say six months, right? Particularly if they rent it, if they'd go ahead and take that step and rent it, they've, they're no longer a flipper. Okay. Uh, but they, a lot of the things that they calculated in here are awesome. Uh, one of them being return on investment, right? So that's one we'll talk about as well. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into the list. We'll go ahead and cover just the top 10 to start then we'll run through real quickly the bottom 10. And then we're going to go ahead and chat about some very interesting numbers like the highest gross return on investment, both best and worst, uh, and also lowest median purchase price. Because remember, we want to we want to be able to compare these things in terms of uh, barriers to entry, right? For, I know there's tons of you out there who are still in the analysis stage, trying to figure out where you're going to make that first step, trying to figure out if you can make that first step or working to simply make it happen. So that's an interesting piece of data to have as well. Okay, but before we do that, let's go ahead and just talk about the generic top 10. And we will start with number 10 and count down. And I'll give you some critical data on each one of these things. We'll give you obviously the city name. Uh, I'll give you their total score in the whole wallet hub analysis. I'll give you their... Uh, market potential rank, and that's another thing to, when you look at this list yourself, we can also rank it by the other two or three things. In this case, uh, the market potential rank, renovation and remodeling costs, and quality of life are the are the other things that they measure. Now, number 10 on our list, and remember, this is the top 10, Tampa, Florida, with a score of 65.73. They had a total uh, ranking in terms of market potential of 37th. Uh, and renovation and remodeling costs are 10th, and quality of life rank is 49th. Number nine on the list, Des Moines, Iowa, with a score of 65.81, 70, ranked 79th on market potential, ranked 5th in renovation and remodeling costs, and ranked 66th in quality of life. Number eight, man, this is interesting, because there's a Tampa we've talked about before. But as I scan over this list, this is an interesting change from the last time we talked about this list because there are a lot of cities on this list that haven't been in the past, uh, or at least not ones that I recall. All right, we just talked about Des Moines. Number eight is Smort, Fort Smith, Arkansas, with a score of 66.11. They ranked 141st in market potential. They ranked first in renovation and remodeling costs. Uh so it's apparently cheap to get that stuff done in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Quality of life rank, though, was 160th. And remember, I think there's only 172 total. Is that right that we did? Yeah, there's 172 total. So quality of life is definitely not uh, where you necessarily would want it. Now, and if you're looking at this from the standpoint of an investment, I, I, something like that would have an effect on me. You know, I, I, I think despite the fact I can really cheaply get something remodeled in Fort Smith, Arkansas, just not seeing uh, the draw in terms of quality of life and the low market potential, right? So how that make it made it to their number eight is a little bit off for me. Number seven, this is one we have seen on lists in the past, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, with a ranking of 66.52, market potential rank of 31st, or 31, renovation and remodeling costs 15th, and quality of life 67th. So a relatively nice balance there, right? 
not way down there in terms of quality and life, not ridiculous in terms of renovation costs, and ranking pretty high in terms of market potential. For me personally as an investor, market potential would be probably the number one thing, and then the next thing would be barrier to entry. How much does it cost me to get in there and get these properties purchased? Next, number six on our list, Peoria, Arizona, 66.83. And what makes this one interesting is it absolutely fits into what we were talking about before in terms of big cities with little cities around them. Peoria is, is you would not know you were in Peoria. You would get off of a plane in Phoenix. You'd start driving around a little bit and still be with what feels like simply a suburb of Phoenix and you're in Peoria, right? So it is in the sort of northwestish end. It's right next to Sun City and Surprise borders Glendale, but Phoenix is right there. So Peoria, it ma- makes our list. But again, it, it, think of it more as Phoenix, uh, simply because that's where it is. Uh, let's see. 66.83 is the total score that Peoria, Arizona got. They ranked uh, Peoria as 86th in market potential, ninth in renovation and remodeling costs. So Let's also keep in mind that when we're talking about ranking ninth in renovation remodeling costs, we can assign that number to all of the outlying Phoenix areas. Now, one reason why I point that out is Phoenix is absolutely one of those cities that I keep an eye on. When I think about places I want to go and consider for investing, Phoenix is kind of on the list. It, it, relative, it regularly comes up. And what's also interesting about Phoenix is there are a wide variety of of types of markets you can appeal to. Now, remember, we've talked about baby boomers, right? And how so, one thing that I'm not sure we actually covered it, it's an article I put aside, is that baby boomers, folks in that older age group, are, are, have seen a ridiculous increase in their number of bankruptcies that they're experiencing. Uh, It's crazy. They're setting records. That equals folks most likely liquidating some of their primary assets like a home and becoming renters. And as we know, there are parts of Phoenix, Scottsdale, Sun City, where folks in that age group want to live. So you as an investor who might want to cater to that segment would clearly see this as a draw. So I, I actually think moving forward, given what we're going to see in terms of the, the the landscape of renters, who's going to become renters at greater rates than we've seen in the past, I think the baby boomers are right up there in the list. And I think that's one reason why looking at Peoria and other Phoenix focused areas, I think is a smart move for most investors. Okay. Uh, and, and again, ranking number ninth in terms of renovation remodeling. I actually am surprised that their market potential isn't higher than that. Uh, and the quality of life is a, they ranked 24th, uh, depending on what you're into right now. I had a girlfriend who lived in, in Phoenix way back. And we had a great time. We used to go hiking all the time. There's not huge mountains right around there. I mean, you're not going to get the California experience or the Denver experience uh, in terms of huge mountains being nearby, but great buttes, some amazing views, beautiful sunsets. It's, it's a, it's, it's a nice place to live. Okay. Next number five, Missoula, Montana is ranked at 67.5 or getting a total score of 67.5 on the wallet hub ranking. They scored third in terms of market potential, which perks my ears, right? Because if there's anything I want, now I tend to be more of a buy and hold guy, thinking that the market's going to keep growing uh, as far as they're concerned is a great thing to me. So seeing that ranking third really piques my interest. They rank 32nd in terms of renovation and remodeling costs. So not horrible. Remember, we're talking about a grand total of 172 areas being ranked. So that's not bad. Quality of life ranking 72. Again, not horrible. I would love to see it a little bit higher than that, but but not uh, anything to sneeze at. Number four on the list, uh, let's see, Fort Wayne, Indiana, right, uh, coming in at 68.07, ranking at 22nd in terms of market potential, 17th in terms of renovation and remodeling costs, and quality of life ranking of 77. Number three, Boise, Idaho. Now, here's something interesting. We've talked in the past about areas that dominate this list, and in the past, we've seen Texas dominate the list. Way back when they first started doing the list, we start out some California areas dominating the list. What we're seeing now is in the top three, two of the three spots are are taken by uh, 
cities in Idaho. So that's an interesting thing to note as well. All right. So number three is Boise, Idaho with a ranking of 68.89. They've got a potential, a market potential ranking of 57 renovation and remodeling cost of an eight, which is great. And a quality of life of 18. Now, what's amazing about this is, is number two on our list is Nampa, Idaho. And where is Nampa, Idaho? Well, it is it borders Boise to the West We've talked a ton about Boise here, and I'm kind of proud of myself for this one because I've been talking about Boise, Idaho for over a year now. Didn't really see anyone else calling it out, uh, just kind of based on my on the ground things I was hearing. I've been hearing about high tech folks moving there. Uh, you know, you, a lot of folks will say, well, you know, older folks end up moving to Idaho. Well, yeah, but they're not moving to Boise. They're mo- moving to Coeur d'Alene, which is way up north in Idaho. So the majority of the folks I've talked to are you know, uh, 25 to 40. I mean, these are folks in the, in their core working years who are looking for a place to go where they can stay and do what they do. I've seen a lot of high-tech people go there. So this is a commentary on that part of Boise. And here's what's awesome, right? We already talked about Boise, which is in the top 10 in terms of good costs relating to renovation and remodeling and in the top 20 in terms of quality of life. It ranks 18th. So Nampa and Boise rank 18th and 19th in in quality of life. Uh, Nampa rates 19th and Boise rates 18th. But here's something super spicy. Nampa, Idaho is second in terms of renovation remodeling costs. So second best in their overall ranking. Uh, They have a market potential of 69 versus Boise's 57. And they got a total score of 70.46 from the folks at Wallet Hub. Um, when I see stuff like this and, and that's grouped, right? That really kind of turns me on. Now, another another time when we saw this happening was again with Phoenix, but it was four different Phoenix suburbs all included in like the top 10 list that we covered. Probably, I think it was a, two years ago when we covered this list. And, and we covered that and saw over the next two years some amazing growth in those areas. So I think when you see clustering like this, it should pique your attention. Um, and, and again, Nampa and Boise are right next door to each other. Now, number one on our list, and this is one that has come up in other lists, is Sioux Falls, South Dakota, with a total score of 73.18. Their market potential is ranking at 72. Their renovation and remodeling costs are at 7, and the quality of life is 27. So for me, these top three all feel like worth your time. For me, it would be number one, number two, number three, and number five. Number five was Missoula, Montana, simply because it ranked number three in market potential. And I I would be very drawn towards high market potential. Uh, Now, in the interest of covering that real quickly, let's talk about market potential. Number one in market potential was Columbus, Georgia. Uh, but their quality of life is way down there at 147. So I don't know, maybe I need to learn more about that. It seems odd to me that you'd have a quality of life ranking that low, but a market potential that high. Number two on the list for market potential was Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Number three, we already talked about, Missoula, Montana. Shreveport, Louisiana is interesting because market potential is fourth, but quality of life is dead last at 172nd. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee is number five in terms of market potential, way down there, 170 in terms of quality of life. Um, so whatever the, the things they're using to measure market potential, which has got to be jobs, it's got to be, you know, unemployment related things, all that type of stuff. Clearly something right is happening here, but the quality of life needs to catch up in some of these communities. Number six, uh, was, is Maryland, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, without, with, you know, not great numbers for, for quality of life. St. Louis, Missouri is number seventh in terms of uh, market potential. Birmingham, Alabama is number eight. Cleveland, Ohio is number nine. And Worcester, Worcester, Mass is number 10 on that list. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to go ahead and just quickly cover the bottom 10 cities. Uh, and then we'll also discuss some of the sexier rankings like return on investment, because that, of course, is always what we like to see. All right, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Are you ready to jump in and start your search for your first investment property? Maybe you've decided that it's time to own your own home, or maybe you're ready to sell your home and move on to something new. No matter what your goal is, The Rebel Broker can help. 
That's right. Aside from hosting this show, I am also the owner broker of White Lawn Sons Real Estate Services right here in Silicon Valley. With over 25 years experience serving Silicon Valley, Morgan Hill, San Martin, and Gilroy, I or one of my great agents can help you achieve your goals in real estate. So if you're ready to look into taking that next step towards achieving your real estate goals, point your browser at www.soldbyrobert.com. That's www.soldbyrobert.com and get in touch. Let me show you how I will earn your business and your respect. Again, that's www.soldbyrobert.com or you can call me at 408-852-0525. California Bureau of Real Estate ID 00984909. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking about the best and worst cities to flip houses. And of course, that also, I think, informs decisions you can make as an investor, whether you're thinking about buying and flipping or not, right? Uh, You pick correctly and you can mix your desire to have a long-term hold where you're renting a property with a backup plan of being able to liquidate it perhaps in in a shorter term. And like most investors, or like me and other investors I know, I like to do a yearly evaluation of my holdings and figure out whether or not it makes sense to liquidate. Um, and that can that is obviously informed by things like this. Am I seeing declining interest in that area for rental properties, but I'm still seeing a relatively strong home purchasing environment? Or is it switching? Are there more people tending to buy and paying an accelerated price while rental incomes are stagnating? That, those kinds of things, right? You want to you want to be able to make those decisions as intelligently as possible. Now, we've already covered the top 10 rankings for uh, this list for WalletHub and also teased a little bit more by also ranking it by market potential and then talking about those top 10s and focusing on what I still continue to think is probably just like Austin was a few years back for me in terms of the place I was suggesting people go. Uh, I think Boise and and the surrounding areas are clearly areas of opportunity right now. All right. So let's talk about the worst of the worst. Uh, number 172, we already talked about this one, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, overall ranking uh, 172nd. Uh, 161st in terms of market potential, just all, all bad, all in the one sixties for Bridgeport, Connecticut, number 171, Newark, New Jersey, uh, number, uh, 170 Yonkers, New York, number 169. And this is one that should very much inform you, right? This is what I was talking about before in terms of the folks who get the headlines, who gets all the love from the pundits, San Francisco, California, 169th. A bad place to buy and flip. Um, and even with what people say, right? And I think one thing that feeds this, now this one, this city has been on the don't invest here list for a couple of years uh, in terms of just, uh, no matter what you're talking about, e- even though people are talking about these astronomical numbers, once you're done, the amount of money you actually have to invest into this stuff, you'd get better return on your total investment if you went to almost anywhere else. And that's been true now for a while, despite the growth in value, quote unquote, or what people will pay for properties in San Francisco. And I think one thing that's feeding this now is a relative stagnation in prices. And we're also seeing big hits in the luxury market. So that's where things are weakening the most. So I think that's one thing that earns San Francisco its illustrious position as the fourth worst city for flipping houses. Not far from San Francisco at 168 is Oakland, California. Uh, In terms of flipping, that's absolutely true. But Oakland is also another one of those markets that's kind of interesting. Interesting. I started looking at it simply because it's one of the few Bay Area cities where you can actually buy a property without having to have $500,000 in your pocket for a down payment. Uh, You can find properties for $300,000, $400,000, $500,000 in Oakland. And there are areas where if you get some good ground truth, you can actually get a decent property in terms of uh, in terms of return. What's interesting is also Oakland in general gets a bad rap, whereas there's really only parts of Oakland that you need to avoid. They rank quality of life in Oakland at 75, but boy, uh, they beat it up in terms of market potential and renovation costs. At number 167 is New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, number 166, Wilmington, Delaware. Number 165, Boston, Massachusetts. Number 164, Oxnard, Oxnard, California. And then I want to end, and I'll end in a couple here. Uh, Number 163, New York, New York. Number 162, Pearl City, Hawaii. I'm not sure why that one's on that list. Uh, I don't know much about Pearl City, to be honest with you. Um, And number 161, 
Los Angeles, California. And I, I want to pull your attention to one other one because, again, it's a it's a headline grabbing one. San Jose, California comes in at 157th on this list. Um, lots of California c- cities are kind of in the bottom 20. Uh, but San Jose is another one of those cities that gets tons of love. It's right there in my marketplace. When I'm marketing to people, I tend to also be marketing to people in parts of San Jose. Um, and it's it's considered a very bad place to do a buy and flip right now. Okay. So let's take a few minutes to look at a couple other interesting things that I think are kind of sexy um, because it's what we care about, right? I mean, we want return on investment. So let's go ahead and take a look at their rankings for the best and worst for highest average gross return on investment because this is kind of interesting. Um, we'll go ahead and talk about the best and the worst. Tied for first place. So all of these cities are tied. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Ohio, and Cleveland has been sort of a steady sleeper in almost all of our lists in terms of places where you where you get the best bang for the buck in terms of return and investment on tons of different reports we've covered. Cleveland, Ohio has pretty consistently been consistently been on those lists. Uh, and Cleveland, Ohio is also interesting for another reason. And we'll be able to talk about in a second because it's also scored in the top five on the next list we're going to talk about. Next is Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And finally, also tying for first place, Wilmington, Delaware, in terms of highest gross return on investment. So A, fantastic. Just on that data alone, those five cities are worth your attention. The list we're going to cover here in a second should put one of them to the top of your list. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But first, let's cover the lowest average gross return on investment. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting, the cities that are on this list. All right, 154th, Montgomery, Alabama. Number 153, Amarillo, Texas. Number 152, Austin, Texas. Isn't that interesting? Now, this this obviously is aimed at folks who would be making their return on their, their investment now. Because remember when this is was exactly the opposite, when return on investment in Austin was on the other side of this scale. It was one of the top places for return on investment. That was probably what four years ago. And it was also a time when I was suggesting folks invest in Round Rock, which is just north of Austin. Um and, and we saw that one blow up over the following two years. Uh, so now we've gotten to this point where folks who would, if you had done this four years ago, you'd be sitting in a position where folks can't even do it now because things have gotten so expensive. Number 151 on the list, Lubbock, Texas. Number 150 on the list, San Jose, California. And remember, we're, right now we're talking about the lowest average gross return on investment. And in San Jose, in most areas, for the average home, you're spending between $800,000 and $950,000, and your return on that money that you're going to invest is going to suck. It is going to be among the worst, uh, ranked the bottom five. Now, here's another one, another good one. Lowest median purchase price, and one reason why I think this list is so important is you want to overlay this with the list we just talked about. Where is the crossover on these lists? So let's go down the list. Number one, on the lowest median purchase price, Mobile, Alabama. Number two, Montgomery, Alabama. Blah. Montgomery, Alabama. Number three, Cleveland, Ohio. So we are now blending the third lowest median per- per- purchase price with tying for first place for return on investment, leading us to Cleveland, Ohio. If that does not earn Cleveland, Ohio, a a space on your, I should at least check this market out list, I don't think you're doing this right. Uh, Next on the list, number four, Columbus, Georgia. Number five, Memphis, Tennessee. So bear in mind, the only city that shares a space in terms of lowest median purchase price and being the highest gross return on investment is Cleveland, Ohio on the wallet hub list. For those of you who are just looking to get into this marketplace, but who also aren't afraid to invest maybe outside of your geographical area, maybe you're looking for that first out of state purchase, or maybe you live near enough to Cleveland, Ohio, that this makes sense to you. You should absolutely be looking at this. Now, this is the other side of this list. I love 
It makes me feel good about me bad talking so many markets that I'm so close to, but the highest median purchase prices, spoiler alert, every single one of these is a California city. So tied for 152nd, four of these five all tied for 152nd. San Jose, California, Fremont, California, Oakland, California, San Francisco, California, all tied, highest median purchase price. Number 151 was Santa Rosa, California. Now, finally, on the sexy data list, um, they they do several others. But for me, in terms of analyzing whether, I'm not, whether or not I'm going to get what I want out of these communities, one I look at is highest median salary that's adjusted for the cost of living in the city we're talking about. Uh, and there are there's an interesting crossover on this because I, I think it's worth it. Uh, because this is, this is a thing you want to know. You want to know that people can afford the rents. If people are having a higher uh, median salary, it's a way for you to calculate reasonably what kind of a pool of renters are you going to have and what are they going to be able to spend? And then you want to mix that with the data you get from doing your research into the areas where you're thinking about investing, where you're, where you're sort of calculating that purchase price versus what I can rent it for. And then understanding reasonably, how big of a pool of potential renters are there that would rent at my price point? Am I way out of the price point? Am I in the price point? Where, where am I? All right, so number one, Gilbert, Arizona. And that withholds our recurring theme of being actually part of a much larger area. Gilbert, Arizona is, is sh- southeast in Phoenix. Still continuous streets, right? You can still, you'll be on streets that you're thinking you're in Phoenix and suddenly you're in Gilbert. Uh, but it's it's right around Tempe, Mesa, and Chandler. Chandler, by the way, I've done some research into Chandler in the past in terms of rental. Lots of great rental opportunities in Chandler, for instance. Chandler's been on our list before in terms of great return on investment uh, communities. But Gilbert makes our list in terms of highest median salary. Number two, Columbia, Maryland. Number three, Overland Park, Kansas. Number four, Scottsdale, Arizona, again, another suburb of Phoenix. So the theme keeps rolling, right? We we are seeing cities that should absolutely be catching our attention. Phoenix, Arizona, and, and in the, some of its suburbs, Boise, uh, these are all things we should be keeping an eye on. Number five, Plano, Texas. Okay, so given that, it seems pretty clear that we've got some highlights, right? Any any of these cities that are ranked in ways that sound sexy to you, that draw your attention in the same way my attention is drawn to some other categories, absolutely make it part of your process to evaluate. And remember, even if you're not going to do it, let's say I've talked about cities that I think make a ton of sense for potentially to invest in. Um, and, and ones we've talked about are Columbus, or excuse me, Cleveland, Ohio, Boise, Idaho, Phoenix, and surrounding areas, right? I'm using, Phoenix didn't specifically make the list, right? But the suburb did. Those are all areas I would say, point your attention. So even if you're someone who doesn't live anywhere near any of those cities, use this as an opportunity to exercise your analysis muscles. Get in there and do what I've suggested uh, on a YouTube video I did a while back for those folks who are members of the Rebel Underground. Uh, That is still an exclusive only for folks who are members of the Rebel Underground. If you'd like to join the Rebel Underground, you can do that at the website, therebelbroker.com, or you can text the number 44222 uh, to text the, I'm sorry, text the word Rebel Broker to the number 44222, and you can join the Rebel Underground that way and get access to that exclusive video. I believe your welcome email will be that video. Uh, so check that out. But use uh, the other things we've talked about on the show before in terms of using Trulia to get that desktop familiarity with a market. I think it's a great tool. Uh, I use it and and more than a lot of other folks, a lot of other folks see higher crime areas as an opportunity. It absolutely is. If you've got the mindset to tackle it and be able to manage it without a lot of headaches. I'm a guy who likes lower levels of headaches. So I tend to not want to buy investment properties that are in higher crime areas. So I'm, I've always got, when I'm doing that first analysis of regions within a metro that I want to invest in, I'm, I've always got that that crime overlay on. So, and I, I know there's people that disagree with me and feel free, pick whatever you want as the things that are key guides for what you're going to do. Okay. Well, God, I think we covered a lot of good stuff. So what's the takeaway for all of you? Well, if you are a flipper, this was aimed squarely between your eyes. 
Uh, this is stuff that you should know. These are things that you should consider. And and as I was saying, go through the motions, even if you're not interested in any of these places, of doing an analysis. Start at the top. Use whatever criteria you find are most important. Get right down to the point where you're looking at specific houses. And once you've zoomed in on that, on another tab on your browser, be looking that ex- that at that exact same square area of the city with all the rentals showing and having the criteria in both of them, what you consider the sweet spot, right? For my money, the sweet spot is always three bedrooms, two baths. Not always true, depending on where you're looking. If you are looking at an area that's right next to a college, often a two-bedroom, two-bath is the way to go, right? Because oftentimes you'll find college students just want to have one roommate or they'll have two kids per room, sharing each of them sharing one bathroom. That's a dynamic. But in terms of the broadest search that I get from people in the areas where I look, three bedrooms, two bath of the bread and butter. So that's what I set it up in Truly when I'm doing that. And I look at what are things renting for versus what are things costing. And then I do an analysis of what if I held on to these properties? Now, a cool thing that you will see at the bottom of a property listing for sale on Trulia is a breakdown of what your monthly costs would be. Make sure all the stuff is there, HOA fees, insurance. Uh, it's going to include principal interest, taxes, and insurance in there. And you can change what your down payment is and see what your monthly costs would be and figure out if you're positive cash flow. And then if you are, you can do the math to figure out what your return on investment is. Just basically take that monthly rent profit you'd get, multiply it by 12, then divide that by the total money invested, and that gives you a return on, on investment, right? And most people shoot for more than 10%. I know folks who are willing to go as low as six uh, and prefer to be up closer to 15. Totally up to you to decide what that number is. But anyway, it's a great way to build these skills, even if you have no interest in these cities. But if you do... Here's your jumping off point. Take a look. I think these are great places to start. Take a look at Cleveland. Take a look at Phoenix. Take a look at Boise. I think these could be great opportunities for you. Uh, And in terms of buyers, great. great, if you have the ability to choose where you live, I think these are great options for you for the same reasons they're great options for a flipper. Uh, If you are a long-term buy and hold person, I think, again, same criteria applies. I think these also make them good opportunities for you. Uh, So I hope that was useful. Uh, I appreciate you all taking the time to listen. With any luck, I've left more value on the table than you've invested in terms of time, uh, which is always the goal. Thanks again for listening, everybody. I'll talk to you all next time.